No one will ever truly love your home as much as you do. And I think that's one reason why the DIY builds are always the ones that I find the most impressive. And this next incredible off-the-grid tiny house is no exception. Hey Cara, how are you? Hey Bryce, how are you? Very well, thank you. G'day Tom, how's it going mate? Hey, good and you? Very well, thank you. It's great to meet you both and wow, this house looks absolutely brilliant. Thanks. Thank you. So first of all, what was it that inspired you to build a tiny house? Well, it all started with Tom actually. Um, a few years ago, about three, four years now, I've decided to change career and I was interested in becoming a market gardener. And so for us, the tiny house was just part of that project. Living in Auckland, we could see we would not be able to afford renting land as well as renting a house. So we decided to build a tiny house that we could move on to rented land where we could produce vegetables and, and start my business. What a great idea. And amazingly, you both built this home yourselves, didn't you? Yes, we did. So. Uh, Tom is the architect, the builder, the project manager, a lot of different things in her, and I was just like the assistant. So uh, you designed the whole uh, the whole house with your dad, and I was just chipping in, giving my opinion and everything. And when we started building, I was going there before work, after work, in the weekends, and he was just full time on it. So like seven days a week. And yeah, for about a year and something, a few months. Yeah, so it was a long, a long project. And what was the process of building your own home like? Painful. <laughs> Intense. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, I guess I had that mindset at the time that if I wanted to do something, I could just figure it out, you know, on the internet and so on. And she's just on board with whatever crazy <laughs> ideas I can come up with generally, right? <laughs> I just trusted him and were like, you want to do this? Okay, let's do it. You want to move to New Zealand? Let's move to New Zealand. You want a tiny house? Okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> now that is a supportive partner. Yeah. I like it. You're a lucky man. And the parking space that you found for the house, this really is something quite special, especially considering you're able to have ducks and chickens and plant market gardens here. That's a huge find, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it was a long process as well because we knew exactly what we wanted. We wanted like a space for Tom to do his business and also for us to park. And so like everything Tom does, there is no middle ground. There is no compromise. So it was like, I want it like that. I want to tick all those boxes and we won't settle for less. And so it took us, I think, six months, um, yeah, a good six months to find a place. It was a process also to talk to the owners about our vision, what we wanted. And it turns out that they really bought in that vision. They really were really keen to have someone to be there permanently. And they really love having us here. And as well, I think that a lot of people bought into the idea of having a, somebody to start a permaculture garden on the land. Uh, a lot of people connected with that concept. Uh, so it attracted a lot of uh, interest actually when we posted online. And just looking at this home, I can tell there is a lot going on. Let's talk about the off the grid system. Yeah, so the house had to be entirely off the grid for water, for power, for everything, uh, except gas, because we still do buy gas. We have on the roof, we have two sets of solar panels, so four solar panels in total, and one solar hot water system. And so that means that our hot water is generated by the sun in winter and summer. In winter, it's not enough, so we also have a wet back in our wood burner inside the house. So basically, we have free hot water and free power as well. Now, what size is the tiny house? Um, so the tiny house is 3.1 wide, it's sitting on the trailer and it's 4.2 uh, high and 7.8 in, in length. So that gives us about 2.7 meters inside of the walls. And you've added a beautiful deck onto your home? Yeah, so the, the deck uh, was really important to us. First of all, uh, to expand the space and we really wanted to have that inside outside atmosphere, being able to spend as much time as we can in on the deck in summer in particular, but also in winter. So that's why we created that pergola with a clear roofing on it, but also to make the house look like a house by kind of hiding the trailer a little bit, which is still uh, under the house there. And so we really managed to do that. And as well, because our project is not crazy enough for me, I decided to go with a water harvesting deck. So there's a top in between the joists that harvest the water and it all goes to the pond where the ducks are. Uh, sitting as all the grey water from the house and the roof uh, water as well. 
And the whole system is also dismantable and we can move it away and drive with the deck when we want to move places if we ever want to. And then I see you've also got an outdoor shower. That's always a really nice addition. Yeah, so that was Tom's plan from the beginning. I think this is from one of your videos. And Tom was like, I want an outdoor shower. It looks so cool. So <laughs> yeah, it is really cool. And uh, so in summer, it's perfect. Especially like uh, for you, I didn't the day after working in the garden, like yeah. being really sweaty, full of blood and stuff. Don't wanna, it doesn't don't have to step in. inside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and for showering the dog as well, it works perfectly. Yeah. And so the shower is not only a shower, but we also have um, a bathtub under the shower. So this way it collects the water from the shower, first of all, and goes into the grey water system. But as well, we can take that piece of deck that we have on top, move it aside, and then we can have a, a nice bath using the shower water. So hot water directly from the hot water system. Fantastic. Well, already from the outside, there is so much going on in this house and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we check it out? Yeah, definitely. All right, after you. Thank you. Oh, this is absolutely stunning. And especially with the position of the windows in here, it just feels so spacious. Yes, a, a tiny house is quite a small space, you know, so you always want to have the sensation that you're looking outside on a, on a longer view. And so we actually placed that one right in front of the entrance so that we can feel that we're not facing a wall when we enter. And we placed just as many windows as we could. And we actually realized later that we can see at least three windows everywhere we're standing in the house, which gives you that nice sensation of space because you don't look at closed walls. And of course, now we are standing in your lounge and this is just such a nice looking space. I especially like how you've got the window seat there. Yeah, it's kind of my special seat. Tom doesn't use it as much, but I really love it. Like in winter or even summer, uh, when the sun sets, just sipping a tea or reading a book. I love that space, it's just amazing. We didn't want a, a second loft, but we added a bit of storage above the window here and we realized it would be a perfect spot for a projector. Uh, so we actually ended up fitting a projector attached in there and we also have a screen that fits perfectly in there and we can watch a movie from the lounge. Fantastic. And you've got the built-in couch here as well? Yes, we do. So it's all custom made. Tom designed it. So uh, on the left side, it's like a storage. So it opens up and the right side like can be pulled as a bed. And also we have lots of storage underneath where we store like all our winter gear. And I'm especially proud of all the cushions because I've sewn them all. <laughs> and I didn't know how to sew before. So I'm pretty happy about that. You've done a great job. And of course the wood stove is just such a nice addition. Yeah, the, um, the wood burner was First of all, the idea was to warm up the house, you know, but also uh, it has a wet back system that couples with a solar hot water system on the roof. So in winter, this plus the solar hot water system warms up the water for us and gives us a good couple of showers and more. And what have you got underneath the fire here? <laughs> That's kind of a last minute addition. Uh, the tiny house idea was also that we would be able to get a dog finally. And so it's a little bit of his bedroom. He has his toys in there and he sleeps in there when he feels like it, when we're too noisy generally. And uh, yeah, so that's Lagoon's place. Mm. And the stairs look really good as well. It looks like you've built in a tremendous amount of storage into these. Yeah, lots of uh, work and plenty of ideas went into that. So we have uh, Lagoon's drawer with all his toys and so on. And we have a drawer for um, the computers and the phone where we have a, a, an electric uh, connection at the back uh, to charge them up. Uh, then all of uh, our papers and all of that go into the stairs as well. And we have a, uh, a cloth hanging space and the washing machine actually goes in there as well. And um, one addition that we did was that a couple of those stairs can be uh, removed uh, and double as seats. Uh, I did sit for the house, either a long one for the bench here or a small one for the lounge if you want to sit like along the couch or something. Mm. And I like that you've got the breakfast bar here. Yeah, there was, there was a bit of a tricky uh, design concept. We didn't know really what to do and if we wanted something folding and we figured it's actually nice to have, you know, um, a bar that's always set up and you don't have to adjust constantly. And it's a workspace, but it's also a dining space with the two bar seats there. 
So we made this bar using um, a recycled Rimu studs from old houses. They're about secondhand, so you can see the nail holes everywhere that I had to fill. And I joined them all together and used uh, that to do the whole bench. Beautiful. And under here, I notice a, an interesting little drawer. What's going on there? Yeah, so we, in the kitchen, we really tried to use all the space. And we realized that we had nowhere to put the dog's ball. So I did a bit of a drawer there. It's actually on ball bearings. And he has a bit of a rope and we told him to uh, pull it out when he wants to drink or to have his food. And so we really like it. He doesn't know how to push it back yet though. Uh, so we're working on that. So he's still learning to tidy up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of work to do with him. <laughs> but that is such a cool idea. I love that feature. And the kitchen design does look really functional. I like how you've created this nook under the stairs as well for your cooker. Yeah, so I think the kitchen is probably the biggest room of the whole house. But for us, it's like really, really important because we do cook a lot and we love it. And so for us, it was really important to have like a four burner hob because sometimes we do have four pots boiling at the same time. We have also like a full size oven because we do bake a lot as well. We actually bake our homemade bread. We have like a sourdough starter named Alphonse in the <laughs> fridge. And we do also have a lot of storage around the, the oven and also, well, this is the usual tiny house pantry kitchen that everyone has. Very nice. But it's really functional and especially for us because we buy everything in our glass jars. So one interesting thing that we did as well was with the Tokik drawers. So we had shallow drawers like that in the Tokik, but we also wanted to be able to stack some plates into those drawers. And so this way I combined a normal drawer with a Tokik drawer to make a very deep drawer that fits all our plates in there. And we repeated that across the kitchen as well. What a good idea. Yeah. The handles are a bit special. We spent quite a bit of time uh, routing those uh, faces off so that we can, uh, first of all, not have to pay for handles, which is great. But also it doesn't stick out, you know, constantly and it's quite nice. And I like the design of it, so yeah. And then what do we have in the room behind you there? So that's um, a bit of a multifunctional concept, actually. The idea was that we would love to have a bit of an office space for Carol to work from home and even myself. Uh, but in the meantime, the whole idea with the tiny house would be able to evolve in it. And so having kids, whenever that happens, you know, we wanted to have a space for them. So in that space, we can actually replace that uh, desk by a uh, two meter long, 90 centimeters wide uh, bed in there with storage under. And then later on, if we ever want to have a second kid, that space here can fit a second bed that goes underneath the first one. What a good idea. And it's really interesting to me how just by making a slight adjustment to the shape, just by adding that little L into this room, you've built in all of that additional functionality. Yes, I have to say that Again, on this one, my dad, who used to be an architect, really helped me seeing solutions like that. Uh, really little corners here and there can be adjusted to make room for special things. What a useful person to have in your life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and bathroom is next door. Yeah, let's check it out. Let's do it. I really like the design of the bathroom. It's especially tidy the way that you've got the shower right against the back wall there. Yeah, the, the entire house was kind of built around that shower. We knew that we had to sacrifice a bit of space for the office slash bedroom next door. And so the shrub that we found was actually 91 centimeters and we worked everything around that, yeah. And it is nice having the shrub there as well because it does give you the option to have a bit of a bath inside if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Not only for us, because I, I think we'll be fine with the outdoor bathtub, but mostly for the kids, yeah. And again, that was uh, a way of future-proofing the house because it's really convenient to bath kids in there. And yeah, the rest of the bathroom is like really, really tiny. We just have a vanity and a toilet. Tom custom designed it again, and it's actually using all the offcuts from the house. So the side of the toilet is actually offcuts from the flooring, and the top is actually offcut from the remo bench in the kitchen. And that's enough for us to do everything we need, really. And then, of course, upstairs, we must have your sleeping loft. Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look. Again, this is a very spacious sleeping loft. It's quite interesting. You've got a lot of space around the bed, don't you? Yeah, well, we kind of calculated everything here so that we could fit in it. So what we did at the time was sitting me against the wall and seeing how tall I was to fit under the roof and making sure that I would fit in there. And it works quite well. We actually mostly lay down here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
of course. And I love the skylight in here. It's quite a big one, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually the biggest one we could find. Uh, and it was really important to us that we could have some, like, first head space, but also, like, see the stars at night. And it brings in a lot of light, which is amazing. It just makes the room much bigger. So we love it. I like the floating bedside tables you've created as well. Yeah, again, this is some old Rimu, and I think it used to be a threshold, like Tom mm. found at the men's shed in Auckland. <laughs> Very cool. And you've also got some built-in storage up here? Yeah, so that's all our clothes are sitting there. So I have the two right drawers, and Tom has the two left one, and it really suits us. We just have to swap sometimes winter summer clothes, and we store them under the couch, but otherwise we have plenty of space for what we need. So how long have you been living in the tiny house now? Well, it's been 18 months, actually, since we moved in. Yeah. Wow. And how do you find living in the tiny house? Oh, to be honest, we really love it. We don't even realize it's such a tiny space anymore because everything is so organized and just go with our flow, really. So it's not tiny. No, the, the space is very functional, so we really feel that everything works out quite well. We would not feel okay to go back into a normal house. It's actually so convenient to, you know, pass things around so easily and be close to everything you need. This isn't just any ordinary tiny house. This is a space that you both built with your own hands. You must have such a tremendous sense of accomplishment with this home. Yeah, I think it was really hard for me in particular to grasp that sensation, you know, and just go with that feeling. I actually feel that it was finished very recently when the deck was finished and so on. So I guess I'm, I'm still trying to get used to that idea. It's that problem when you're a DIYer, everything still feels like a project because there's always something you can do, right? Yeah, that's, that's really how I feel. And, and now I think the finishing touches are on and, and I'll be feeling like it's totally over now. It's very empowering because we know exactly how it's been made. We know where the little thoughts are and where the strength of it are as well. We know how to fix it if something happens. This house is actually just memories because we've built everything. So I remember when we laid the floor, I remember when we did the couch and it's all bits of memories. Some sad memories, some super joyful memories, some a bit frustrating memories, but every single screw has a memory with it. So it's a living, it's a living thing, I think for me. And what was the cost that was involved in building this home? So including everything, the deck, what's inside the house, solar system, and even some tools that we use to build the house, it's roughly 140K. New Zealand dollar. That's a really great result, especially for all of the solar system and everything as well. Yeah, we've been really happy about it. And I know it's on the higher price range, but we didn't make any compromises because for us, what was really important was the, the feel of the house, the lower footprint on the, on the earth and the finish really. Yeah, and you really can sense that quality in this home. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and now the house is finished, it's time to turn your attention to the gardens, right? Yeah, thanks for the pressure. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess I just need to get going. Um, yeah, there's lots to do before we get there, but hopefully sometime soon we'll get some veggies popping out of that soil. Yeah. Very exciting. Well, you have both done such an incredible job in this house. As I said, you can really feel the quality and see all of the incredible attention to detail and unique ideas that have gone into making this build happen. You have done such a great job. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. My pleasure. Kara and Tom have done such an amazing job building this home for themselves. I'm always so fascinated to see the way that people utilize space and create their homes. And in this house, there are just so many unique features from the incredible off the grid system to all of the little storage nooks that have been built in. This really is an incredibly impressive home. <laughs>